Akarungam na gondo Tati Tati Om Phai Absalom. 
Then David said to all his servants who were with him at Jerusalem, Arise and let us flee, or else there will be no escape for us from Absalom. Go in haste, lest he overtake us quickly, and bring down evil upon us, and strike the city with the edge of the sword. My glory will lift up my head, I cry aloud to the Lord, from this holy mountain he answers me. disciples came to the other side of the sea, to the country of the Gerasenes. And when he had come out of the boat, they met him out of the tombs, a man with unclean spirit who lived among the tombs. And no one could bind him anymore even with a chain, for he had often been bound with something. I was reflecting uh, before I came here today that I think this is the fifth time now that I have offered this Mass for the beginning of the academic year. should be the sixth time, but last year, COVID offered the homily. <laughs> <laughs> so I missed it. And it's amazing how fast things change in two years. Because for four years, I always remembered the same group of guys who would be sitting here. They're gone now. They're all gone. And now I think about, too, this chapel. The chapel has completely changed since I was here last, too. It's like a miracle. So congratulations to you all for what you've done over this period of time. Uh, the gospel today is interesting. It's one of those gospels that makes you pause for a minute and think. Uh, Jesus does a great act. heals a man who's been possessed forever and sends the demons away and the people want him go to go away as fast as possible get out of our community it was not a popular thing to do why can you imagine you all grew up many of you in farming communities could you imagine if somebody came in and possessed 2,000 heads of your cattle and they all ran through over themselves over a cliff you just wiped out an entire economy these people didn't want him around. They wanted him to get out. But his point was, and I think it's an important point for all of us, sometimes to do what is right <coughs> means that you have to do what is true. And to do what is true is not always popular. Sometimes you must make a very unpopular decision. Today I'm going to talk to you about his best pupil. His name was Cleanthes. And Cleanthes was um, an interesting guy because he was not the most intelligent person in the world. In fact, his nickname was the donkey. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> it gives us four ways to live that are very important. And that's why I want to share with you today. I think that they are something that we can reflect on easy and they're simple. The first one is courage. He says that we must be courageous. The second one is justice, the third is simplicity, and the fourth is wisdom. He said these are the four key points to a virtuous life. Courage, justice, simplicity, and wisdom. <laughs>
God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. Ascending above all the heavens and sitting at your right hand, he poured out the promised Holy Spirit on your adopted children. Therefore, now and for ages unending, with all the host of angels, we sing to you with all our hearts, crying out as we acclaim.
The essentials remain, but externals change. The substance remains and the accidents change. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> no metaphysics class now, sorry. <laughs> if you compare yourself with who you were yesterday or last year, you will see that you are the same, but you are not the same. You are the same, but you are not the same. That's the nature of growth. In the process of growth, externals need to change so that the essentials can grow and develop. Assuming new forms while keeping the essentials keeps us relevant and significant. That's why in Evangelii Gaudi, Pope Francis invited everyone, I call, to be bold and creative in the task of rethinking the structures, styles and methods of evangelization, unquote. With this fundamental goal in mind of assuming new forms of being a church and doing evangelization, the Holy Father has announced a long journey of preparation for the forthcoming General Synod of the Bishops in 2023 on synodality itself with the theme Communion, Participation and Mission. Though our focus in the seminary is not the synod as such, any effective growth consists of these three aspects. Therefore, for our reflection as well, for this year, we have chosen the theme, <coughs> communion, participation, and mission. <coughs>